In the pattern matching concept, C sharp 8 has provided some great features for the property matching also. This pattern matching will help us to reduce the number of if conditions or if else conditions that we use to write to match something. Let's understand how this will work. Here again I'm using this console application and in this console application this is the previous example for the switch case and this time for this property let's add one more class. So just right click on the name of your project, go to this add and choose the class and this time let's write the property matching over here. Property pattern. Okay. Let's just click on this add button. So we will have a new class and the name is property pattern over here. We will start with the basic one and in this property pattern class, let's add a new function. So let's say I'm writing public boolean type. Let's start with a very basic one and let's say here I'm writing valid date of birth. And in this function, I will expect and date. So it is date time or I can use the date only, but let's go with the date time. Here is this date time. So this is something that I will get in the input. Now here I need to write a logic. So I want to return true value if the year in this date time is 2022. So there are two ways either I can use the if and else conditions like if this date time dot year equal equal 2022 and then I can return it. But there is one more way and that is the property matching. Let's say how we can do that. Here I can check this date time is I will use this is keyword and it is coming from the C sharp 7 to work with the property pattern matching here we have to use the curly braces and if I will use this curly braces and just press control and the space bar then you will see I will get all the properties from this date time object so let's say I want to compare the year okay so what should be the year it is 2022 that's it this is how we can write the condition and I can simply return it from this particular place so what we have now return date time is year 2022. So this will return true if the input date or the incoming date has year as 2022. Let's test this particular example. So here I am in this program.cs class and so this is something which is coming from the previous one. Let's just comment this line and here let's say I'm writing console.write line and in this one Let's use this property pattern and because we are not using the static keyword over here. So we have to create the instance of this property pattern or it is better to create an static method like this. Okay. So this time we can use this method with the name of this particular class. So how to do that property pattern dot. What is the name of our method? It is valid date of birth and let's pass the current date of birth. So here I'm writing date time dot now. In this current date time, the year is 2022. Let's say what is the output. So I'm just running this application. You can see we are getting this true over here. Okay. Now I got one more requirement that the year can be either 2022 or 2021. How can I do that? So I can simply use this over keyword and I can write my second value over here. You can use basically n number of or over here and you can write all your conditions. Let's say it is. 2020 just save all the changes and go back to the browser again this time you will check so it will work for 2022 2021 and 2020 also so this is how you can compare multiple values for an specific property what will happen if i want to compare more than one property at one time so let's say here i was talking only about the year property but along with this year i also want to work with the month then how to do that to compare multiple properties, you can simply put a comma over here like this and you can use your second property. So let's say if it is month. So month is, let's say it is one. That's it. You can use multiple values at this place. Now this time, if you will try to run this application, let's say in this program.cs class, we are passing the current time and the current month is this nine. So basically as per the IST format, first we are writing this date, then the month and then the year. So the month is 9 and the year is 2022. Let's run this application and this time we must get the false. You can see we are having false. Why? The year is valid but the month is not valid. So if in this month I'm writing or let's say it is 9, save the changes and just try to run this application again. This time you will notice we are getting true and it is valid because we are passing year 2022 and the month is 9. Using this approach, basically putting the comma, you can add all the properties over here. This is how the property pattern works in C sharp 8. 
let's talk about one more example for the property pattern and this time here i want to add one more class let's say it is employee class so let's add a new class with the name employee and in this employee class i want to have three properties so first is the id this one and second is the name and third is basically a boolean type and it is is temporary so if the employee is temporary or permanent i want to track that option by using this boolean value and let's add one more over here so basically this is for the address so i'm going to add one class that is the address and let's define the name of the property at this place and let's quickly add this new class so i can use the feature of visual studio to create this new class just hover the mouse and here you will see we are getting this option generate new type and let's do it so here we are having this address class and in this address class i want to have one property basically so if it is let's say it is state and let's add one more property here so basically this is going to be boolean is current if this is the current address or not this is just for understanding the concept don't worry too much about this logic so let's go with this address class and here we are so this employee class is complete we are having id name is temporary and the address okay if i go to this property pattern class and here i want to add one more method so let's do that so i'm writing public and let's use the boolean and let's say here i'm writing validate employee so here i want to write a logic or let's make it static and here in this method i want to write a logic that if the employee id is 5 then i must return true over here so let's pass that type that is the employee and here i'm writing this employee so how can i do that i can simply use this return keyword employee is i can use the property pattern and by using this curly braces you will see we are having all the properties from this employee class if the id is 5 that's it just save all the changes put a semicolon and let's use this method in the program.cs class so here we are let's just copy this paste it again and let's just comment this line so here i'm writing this validate employee and this time here i have to provide an object so how can i do that employee like this and just create some properties so let's say it is the id let's say i'm giving five just run this application and let's see what is the output here you will see we are having true value so it means it is working fine if i'm passing 10 over here or any value that is different from this one so this time it must return false here you can see we are having this false now this is something that we have already covered in the previous example but here let's say i want to talk about nested property pattern so i want to check about the address as well so here is the address and in this address i want to again use the property pattern so i can use the nested property pattern as well and this time you will see we are getting all the values from this address property so if the current is true so this is my condition that id must be 5 and the is current property from the address must be true okay so without making any change only just let's use this id is equals to 10 let's just run this program you will see obviously we are getting the false value because the second condition is not working properly what will happen if i'm passing the address also so this address is equals to new address and here if i will pass is current is equals to true or i can just extract this value from here because it is not looking good and i can just put it over here let's say here i'm writing where obj is equals to like this and i can pass this obj over here let's just format this data so here is the address there we are so this time let's run this application we are getting false this is because the id is 10 over here let's use the 5 and run it, run it again here you will see it is true this is how you can work with the nested property pattern in the csrp application and again you can use this or keyword and you can define n number of logic at this place what will happen if i want to update this condition in such a way that it must return true for id is greater than or equal to 5 earlier you were talking about a fixed value that is 5 or 7 or 1 and for that you were using this or keyword but this time i want to return the true for greater than 5 how can i do that 
and to work with this greater than or less than value i can use these operators so this is the greater than if the id is greater than 5 then it will work and let's go to this program.cs class and here let's update this id it is 6 so what we are passing we are passing 6 id and this is current true and this is our condition that id must be greater than 5 and this address is current property must be true let's run this application and let's see what is the output you can see we are getting true from this application and which is as expected if i'm passing something which is less than 5 let's say it is 3 and run this application again we will get false as an output and here is this output okay to work with the less than you can also use that less than symbol over here like this and just run this application and we will get true here we are because we are passing id as 3 and which is less than 5 and because of that we are getting this output now in this property pattern matching concept i got a new requirement that i have to combine the switch statement the new one and the property pattern matching together let's understand how to work with that to understand this concept let's create one more method over here so i'm writing public and let's say the return type is integer and we are talking about the employees and let's say i want to provide some bonus to the employees and the bonus must be based on their id if the id is let's say less than 5 then i will consider them as a senior and they will get more bonus if the id is between 5 to 10 then they will be a kind of mid level and they will get a different bonus and if the id is greater than 10 then they will get a different bonus so i want to write a logic something like that so let's say here i'm writing calculate bonus and here i will expect two parameters this time so let's say it is employee and let's say the bonus is different for all level of employees so we can say that it is 10% for the senior, 7% for the mid level and 5% for the junior level. So let's pass that value also here. So I'm writing this int and let's say I'm writing the bonus percentage like this. And here I can work with the switch statement and to work with the switch statement, I have to write the employee over here and then the switch here. Let's write our first case. And this time i have to work with the property pattern so we can use this property pattern this time and if the id is let's say it is less than five so i will consider them the senior one and for that we have to write this arrow symbol and i want to return this let's say it is bonus percentage and multiply by 10 something whatever logic you want to write over here you can write it at this place for the second condition if the id is let's say greater than 5 so i will return something else so this time it is bonus percentage maybe multiply by 5 and for the default one let's use that underscore and let's return 0 and let's use this return keyword the main purpose is to work on the concept and the concept is that if you want to combine the switch and property button then this is how you can work with the switch statement and here instead of writing the expression directly you can use this property pattern and inside in this property pattern you can apply all your logics let's say here i was talking about only the id if you want to assign more than one properties as well then you can put a comma and you can define your second property as well and you can also use the nested property pattern at this place the logic depends on your requirement but this is how you can combine the property pattern with the let's try to use this method let's use this static one because i do not want to create the object so here we are calculate bonus go back to this program.cs class and let's just comment this line and let's use one more console out right line statement and here let's try to use that property pattern class name so here we are dot calculate bonus this is the method and here i will pass the employee this is the object and in the second one i will pass let's say the bonus so here let's say the bonus percentage it is 10 this is the obj obj is the name for our object so this is what we have let's run this application you will get we are getting 100 over here why we are getting this 100 we are passing id is equals to 3 let's go back to this property pattern here we are so if id is less than 5 which is this condition then this bonus percentage and we were passing 10 over here we are multiplying this 10 with 10 and as a result we are getting 100 on the browser if the id is greater than 5 then we will get 
10 multiply by 5 which would be 50 let's put an id which is greater than 5 so here we are and this time let's use 1 3 run this application again and this time you will see we will get 50 output here on this console window this is how you can utilize the property pattern matching in the c sharp 8